Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the final hour of um, session three of um, uh, Depth of Culture. Session three? Session one. Part three, session one. What did I say? You said session three. I don't know what I said. It doesn't matter. So, you know what, what did I say? I didn't say that. I don't know what I said. Kieran's gone. She was like, I haven't Good. been able to kill anybody yeah, yet, and nobody wants my, my oil. So. They're, they're trying to sort out a computer thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that why it looks like Eric's talking to somebody? Yeah, because he's talking to Aaron, who is his off camera. Yeah. I don't believe you. If we don't see Aaron, it doesn't exist. Yeah, when, when someone's not on camera, they don't exist. That's yeah. how it works. Exactly. It saves, it saves memory space. Yeah. All right, so back to uh, game. Uh, so, uh, Stallboard, you devise a plan for... When I... The... when No, because you said there's no way to do it, so there's no way to do it, so I put it down and say we can come back to it if we need it. Okay, there you go, and you lean it against I lean wall. it in a corner, <laughs> so it stays upright. Which is rather amusing. And, uh, so you lean it in the corner, you're fine, I'm not gonna make a big check or anything like that for it. Like, oh, it's a check not to spill the oil all over your boot. Make it We're level eight! Check for it, mate. <laughs> Um, so you make your way, uh, through, like, after this room, uh, is here. So when you guys came into this room, my apologies, and they kind of, like, looked around and climbed up to get to that other area. I didn't describe the rest of the room, which is the point that Ollie was making beforehand. So the rest of the room that's here, um, where they would have used this as a spot to kind of get to that area that was above that, uh, Kieran climbed into. Uh, the rest of this room here, uh, when Bellum first walked in, he would have, of course, used his ability, sift, boof. It had the 25 check. This is the room where you would actually find the traps, not the man's traps, but the actual triggered traps. Um, the different types of traps that exist in this room is for one, the entire ground itself is uh, has little like uh, holes inside of it where clearly like blades would shoot up from. Judging by the uh, circumference of the holes that are there and the fact that they have like little metal rings or slides to make it so the metal could slide up easier than uh, maybe a grating against stone, is you actually think that um, uh, the spikes should come up like a solid three, three and a half feet. So, like, enough to definitely impale and kill uh, somebody. Even a tall person going between their legs would be, yep, you get high enough up to to, to kill them. Um, <clears throat> and that litters throughout the entire floor, uh, placed about in a uh, strategic manner, in such a way that assuming all of them came up at once, you don't believe that anybody would be thin enough to actually avoid the, the effect of this trap, right? So anyways, that's what you see from the uh, the grounds. Now, most likely what would happen is if somebody survived that trap, hopefully they wouldn't survive uh, the traps that came from up above because uh, the trap that we drop from above is... Um, uh, my apologies. The trap that we drop up above, if you, when you look up there, it looks almost like a gas would come pouring down. It must be some sort of dangerous heavy gas because it would use gravity to pull itself down to the level where people would be breathing it or those that above would inhale it first because they were hiding from the ground one. Uh, nothing's in the walls or anything like that, but theoretically anybody that got through that first room would die inside here. Um, whoever was in the one manning the first room would most likely be left dead at that point because, you know, anybody that survived here would be able to climb up and be like, ah, you fucking goblins. Uh, the room leading off of here is a singular room. I mean, you guys go through the, uh, uh, the area into that room it opens up into what looks like an armory, a place where people will be able to grab their weapons uh, in theory to defend uh, the the place. Uh, Bellum, you're once again able to use your sift to kind of like mm -hmm. look throughout the room. And as you look throughout the room, you see that there are no traps in this room. There's no uh, traps. There's no um, uh, secret doors. There's no anything like that that you find in this room that's full of weapons and looks like it could be an armory that somebody would grab their uh, equipment from. Um, I would just inform them that the traps seem to no longer extend into the cave and that the chance of us dying via trap has gone significantly down. Woo! I mean, uh, wasn't it zero before because there was nobody... Manning. I, I mean, yeah, but an unmanned trap. I mean, what if that oil had rusted and I was holding a torch? What I if mean, it just happened to fall? I could still have gotten hurt. I deserve it at that point, right? Like, I'm just saying, I could have gotten hurt. Rude. You could have gotten hurt. Anyone could have gotten hurt. Now, at least you don't have to worry about at that. At some point, it stops being a trap and just starts being bad luck. <laughs> that's, that's, what point that's... is If that? a rock falls from the cave ceiling, is that a trap? No. 
I thought of something to do in another adventure. Oh god. He's like, ah, it's a trap! No, it was just a random rock. <laughs> Rocks fall, you die. This place does Jesus raise my questions. There was a lot of people who looked like civilians. There is no civilian life here. There's no place for civilians to live unless they're deeper in. But then why would there only be one path to and throw? Maybe they were retreating to the stronghold and didn't quite make it. Mm. That's what I am assuming. Or maybe that was one chamber of many and we're going to go into a further place. But why would they be living on the outer side of the protected area if that was the case? You know, you're very smart, Stalbor. And I know that you know the only way to know is to dive in. So I feel, Reich, keep on trucking. And that so, I shall. The room that you're in is full of Dakani styled weapons. There's many of them here, including, say, uh, a Kasurigama, or a Katara, or a Nagadati, or, or any of those other. Or a weeb of a DM. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> Maybe at one point in my life. Ooh. <laughs> um. RV would be happy. Um, so you uh, and we'll never see this this reference. <laughs> it's too late. It's too late for Ian. So um, been asleep for hours. <laughs> you uh, fair. So you uh, you see all these different weapons in here, and they're again, they're well preserved because they're inside of a place that was otherwise sealed off. Not sealed off to air, which is why I didn't describe you opening that first thing and getting a gust of old stale air or anything like that. It's sealed off to air. But it's fairly well preserved to like weathering effects and stuff like that, and it's not particularly moist down here to rust the the metals very much. Maybe a little bit of rust, but something that could that could be repaired if they got either scraped off to thin it, or maybe magic, whatever the case may be. Um, do you guys care about any of the weapons here? Do you want to investigate the room at all? Or do you just like push on? I would ask Reich. Um, do you, do you want any of these weapons? No. These are not what I'm after. I mean. Let's keep going. You could probably sell them for something. I'm he, he like waits to see what he says to that. Yeah, like I'm not interested uh, interested in the monetary value. If you want to take it, then take it. What are you interested in again? <laughs> if we Hold find it, I'll let you shit. know. I'm sorry. Uh, if we find it, I'll let you know. Great. Bellum Bellum goes over to like one of the nicer looking swords of the bunch. He's like, uh, I'll just leave it. I'll just leave it. By the way, if we get through this, you can never be mad at me for my half-assed plans again. Because you have given us no information. It's true. This is very okay. unrike of you. Just like ignoring me for five months. In my, <laughs> in my defense, I have uh, I have limited information on what we're looking for. Hey, I'm for it. I'm here to help. I can search for things. If you don't know what you're searching for, I can't help other than using these two eyes right here. So let's do it, Rake. Let's find what you're looking for. All right, and then we continue okay. onward. Okay, so you guys walk through the uh, the weapon room without spending much regard beyond that a little bit of conversation. And um, uh, where is, there it is. And keep pushing yourself to the, um, uh, to the next room beyond. When you guys get to the next room beyond, this is where things finally um, uh, change a little bit. It opens up into an area that seems much more living. As a matter of fact, the door that separates the room that you were immediately in behind and the door that uh, opens up to the next room is an extremely heavy door. As a matter of fact, it is a door that is comprised of, a, uh, of steel. And with a, uh, a moment's uh, in inspection there, um, Stalvor, because clearly you look into these kind of things, you can tell that this door is not like a door that was made out of like uh, smelted steel, right? It is folded metals that would have been used to make this door. It must have taken them eons to form it, but it's meant to be like a, almost like a vault door, something that would be almost impossible to bash through. It is wide open, and so easy for you guys to get through, but were it shut and locked by a huge uh, lock that looks to be based on the handholds that are on it, like it takes two uh, people uh, using their mites to be able to uh, move the lock into place to hold it shut, you probably wouldn't be able to get through that door. 
you probably wouldn't have the strength or ability to do so. Um, is it open? It is open, which yeah. is why you guys are yeah. able to come through. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you probably wouldn't be able to get through. <clears throat> do you investigate it much? Uh, actually, no, I don't have to worry about that. So one of the nifty things that you pick up there, uh, Bellum, is you actually do see like a hidden thing. And so as uh, Stalbar is kind of regarding the door, you actually, your mark picks up the fact that there are actually arcane runes uh, on the door itself. So as you kind of like use your hands, like rub across the runes to like bring attention to them, it actually makes them glow quick enough that Stalbor can look at them and actually be able to quickly identify that the runes are, are something to ward even against magics that open doors uh, magically, right? So uh, it's something that, again, meant to be impenetrable. It's open, so it doesn't matter. Um, right. th th this entrance would have been sealed. So when you guys come into this uh, this next room, the one that you're, you were able to easily get into, um, it's much more living space. It, granted, it's a corridor, so um, not nothing that kind of like stands out for a super unique design or significance of room other than being a corridor. But as you're traveling through it and looking into the various doors here and there off to the sides, some of them open, some of them closed, none of them trapped. Um, you're able to see that these uh, doors lead into various different things. Like, for instance, it might lead into uh, another hallway that goes down to like where different people's homes are. It might lead into a shop that would exist there. Another one would be like a guard station where like uh, effectively like a town guard would have like a, a meeting place. This seems to open up into a, a cave network that is a Dakani home. Now, much of the Dakani Empire existed above ground. Uh, and those cities above ground had underground segments to them. This seems to be a whole city that existed underground, which was very, very early Dakani design, or in some very specific locations, might have existed later on in time as well. Clearly, this is one of those, right? But one of the things that kind of sticks out as a key feature as you're really like pushing your way forward here is that the ceilings here, as I described beforehand, are lower. This is designed to be a comfortable uh, space for the smaller breed of, uh, of goblin kin to exist. The ones with the horns, noses, and the orange flesh, and so on. But they are tall enough, because they're vaulted, they are tall enough that everybody can walk through without ducking your head, even Reich's obnoxious height, without uh, ducking your head or anything like that. They're like eight and a half foot ceilings, nine foot ceilings, which again are vaulted to the peoples that would have lived there before. Um, <clears throat> to the dwarf like people. So as you're making your way through, you're taking in the sights that there are, when you finally get to the place where homes are, and you look into the homes, you see that there are people, once again, just dead in their homes. When you go into different parts of like the streets as you make your way through, you can see areas where like little barricades were put up, and some people like died around the barricades, but there was no like real sight of, of like uh, fighting or death or anything that happens down there. The whole place seems to be a graveyard with people either choosing to die comfortably in their own homes or gathered together in larger areas. Are these bodies skeletons? They are, because they've uh, decayed long enough over yep. the course of the centuries that passed. Does it look like they were d killed like, in an attack or just like dropped dead? Not, neither of those. Uh, Stalbor, would Which you like I, to... I would ask this, I would ask Stalbor, yeah. Would you like to make your next uh, check for me, sir? Mm-hmm. Wow, you are rolling... I will use an action point. Rolling poorly, which is unusual for these kind of checks for you. I know. My heart's not in it. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares about the heart? It's 15. It's because your heart's in that. It's because, I, like I said, Stalbor already has a theory. And he's just sticking with it in his head. So it, it seems as though that like now that you've actually had time, it's hard to tell these things because of the fact that you're dealing with skeletons and not uh, actual fleshy uh, like organs and whatnot to work with. But you can see based off of like the decay that's happened to the bones and whatnot, it was very likely they died due to starvation uh, mm. over the course of time. And uh, you can see because like the, the body consumes itself as it starves more and more and more, it breaks itself down. You see that the yeah. bones be more brittle. Now, again, that's, that's something that's not easy for you to discover at first. The first few people you checked and finally able to now, because again, there's also decay in the bones from the centuries that have passed. But you yeah. are able to eventually kind of put that together. Do you say anything? Yeah, I just sort of explain that the people here died slowly. It wasn't an attack. It might have been an infection. But they seem to have been locked in and have died doing the best they can to survive. Actually, it kind of looks like a lot of them accepted it. 
I imagine they locked themselves away from something much worse outside. Or dirt further down deep. Mm. Horrible that they couldn't or wouldn't fight. So, um, uh, you guys taking these sights and taking, like, uh, absorbing the fact that this horrible event happened that somehow wiped out this entire place and just decide we need to continue pushing on. Now, right now that you're down here, I've kind of gathered your bearings of, like, the more central areas, and you know that this is going to be a pretty decent-sized uh, cave network and whatnot. You would be able to navigate yourself with relative ease to the different segments that you could find along the way. So, what would you... What's an area that you would choose to go to? There's like a mercantile area. There's obviously more living spaces. There's the places where like the ruler of this place would be uh, and so on and so forth. And as a reminder to how the Kani um, empires work, because it was a feudal system, um, it wouldn't, it would have been more or less their version of say like a duke or a duchess that would rule this kind of place. and would answer to the emperor and those that were above themselves in the, um, in the uh, caste system. I would probably head towards where the, uh, the the head honcho lived here, given what I'm looking for. Uh, but I do want to stop by the mercantile place because there's a possibility that, you know, something happened there. May I make a suggestion as we're traveling? If okay. you see any signs of a temple or place of worship, whatever you're looking for, maybe there. It's worth a shot. Well, Reich, what is the predominantly uh, predominant faith of the Takani peoples? Uh, let's see here. Um, as you're making your way towards the mercantile district and then over towards the, the temple faith, uh, the temple place. Yeah, that makes sense, dude. The, the, the... I'll give uh, Eric a moment to refresh his memory. Because um, there's a lot of everyone knowledge to hold up here, right? So um, as you're making your way to uh, the mercantile area, again, ease is how you're able to find your way there. And uh, inside the mercantile place, you're able to see that there was actually a bit of a uh, happenstance of a happening that, that took place here. There was, you can tell by like uh, where there's a bit of destruction, there's um, like uh, actual weapon marks on walls. You can see some of the bodies that lie on the ground, their bodies that lie slain by, by combat and the like. Um, that actually did part, uh, part uh, take place here. Uh, feel free to roll me your investigation checks, the like. I, I, I'm, as we're investigating, Stab was just going to say, this is where they kept their stores. The last surviving people tried to find whatever food they could here. They and probably fought each other for it. While Starbor is unfortunately uh, maybe a bit removed from his investigation, probably because he's fucking smart, and so he was kind of put two and two together on his own, um, he doesn't actually put too much heart into the investigation. I don't look himself. into the buildings, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So like More takes in the thing and makes us two and two together. Um, I'm waiting on Reich to make his investigation. Uh, sorry. No, investigation. I can't find anything that says what they worship. I never actually looked into it, to be quite honest with you. It wasn't very important to what I was doing. Let me do a Google. Um, I'm doing the Google, and the Google is telling me nine. So to continue on, the um, uh, investigation you guys do, uh, Kieran, you know, put a little bit of heart into it because she's always interested in... in the causes of combats and chaos and stuff like that that happened. So it's an interesting thing she's seen so far. Okay, there were a couple of death rooms. That was cool. Boring, just bodies lying around. Oh, cool. Death happened here. Why? So, uh, and she's actually somebody that knows the most about war out of all of you. Um, Reich knows theory of war, here and practice of war. So um, by making your way around looking, you are able to see that the evidence that you find does support Star Wars theory. Um, Mark, it's like, the weapons where weapons can be found or uh scripts and stuff like that uh, there are no battles that took place or any combat that took place outside of their doors or within but any place that stored foods or or anything of uh nourishment that there's literally corpses inside the building and so on and it's actually a room that at one point in time was was locked but you guys are able to uh, easily open it up. You spend a couple minutes time. I'm not going to make you roll for it. You're able to open it up and you see inside. There is a few more corpses that clearly locked themselves inside of a room that had some more wares and eventually withered and died after those ran out too. You know what I mean? Probably too ashamed or incapable of opening the door themselves uh, mm. to, to come back out after those stores ran out. Um, but yeah, you find not even the slightest... Uh, you know, uh, what is it? There's uh, the only crumbs left were too small even for a mouse, right? Like, it was 
the place has been run dry. <clears throat> hmm. Well, I don't see some sort of ruin to put the rest of these body parts into. You just see sad stories. Mm. Yeah, and it's best we... Maybe they right. were protecting something from the outside forces that were invading them. With the... I mean, obviously they weren't expecting to survive in here with the amount of food that they had. Maybe they Maybe kept they themselves hide. locked away. I the think the question is, if they left themselves locked away, what opened that vault? I'm gonna go... I don't... Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna take a look around. As these guys are talking, I seem to, uh, I, I seem to be tuned in at first. But as soon as she mentions the fact that they might have been defending something, I'm gonna start searching all over, see if I can find any signs of like an area that these people were trying to defend, anything like that. She didn't mean here. She meant the whole city. Yeah. Well, yes, I, I, I understood, but uh, I'm trying to, you know, get some sort of sense of. Where this might have happened, I the, and I meant it like would be a false flag. And I meant like I didn't mean like this particular area either. I meant like in general. I'm gonna look for like areas where I can see people like piled up. Right. And um, did you do this kind of frantically or no? No, I, I just I seem very methodical. Okay. You can tell this that I'm like very tense. Okay. Like, like I'm, I'm waiting for something to happen, but I'm. Reich always has this kind of very stoic, calm demeanor about him. So right. it's not like I'm very antsy, you know, like searching all around places crazily. Okay. I don't agree with it, but it makes sense to me based on what I know of Reich and his people. Rather than scurrying away in a cave to die, maybe they did this for purpose. It makes sense. It's a good theory. If this has something of value that they were trying to protect. Instead of running away, they stayed here and starved to not risk it being found by someone else. No, it, it, it makes perfect sense. I just wish I knew what it were. The only way to find is to find it. I know. So, uh, I, I'm kind of keeping quiet. And uh, I'm going to keep looking around. So what I'm looking for now, Scott, is any, like, large denominations of dead people. Particularly, uh, I know that obviously this happened a long time ago, so it's going to be, like, skeletal remains. But I'm looking for any large denominations of such uh, uh, such people that maybe look like they died in some sort of last stand or anything like that. Um, or any, like, large group of people that looks like they, they got locked somewhere and they just starved to death there. I mean, locked and starved well, to death is pretty much everywhere. Yeah. But yeah. Last Stand is thus far, the only place where you've seen that is the marketplace. Yeah, if you start looking like for that, uh, I mean, even if you if you wouldn't verbalize it, but the whole point of this place, and Stalbor is talking out loud because he's an mm -hmm. asshole, is that nothing got in. So what you're looking for, Reich... And no one got out. A fortification where people remained. There won't be signs of a battle. That's the point. These people died, so a battle never happened. Where would they make their stand? Uh, where would they Where would they hide themselves away? Depends what we're looking for here. Sorry. Probably the most defensible position. Yeah, so I, that's that's where my next thing will look for. I'm gonna look for a just using my my you know tactical uh, tactical mind. Maybe I'm gonna somewhere look for further a underground position. Sure, 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 sure. So Maybe kind, kind of like a, a like a holdaway spot where you'd be able to make your last stand or whatever it is so actually that position and you're welcome to head there or where uh star wars suggesting before would be actually be where the the ruler would be their uh homestead would be the most safe location where you would kind of invite a certain number if, if possible all the peoples behind heavier doors to protect against it um the uh they're the dark bleh. The uh, Dakani Empire is not far removed from the mindset of dwarves in most fantasy settings and how it is that they designed their caves and the like and how defensible and, and uh, caste-oriented they were, although dwarves are less cast and just more. I'm a king, you're my peasants. You know, so um, with a strong military. So um, it actually would be closer to where that is. And you're welcome to beeline straight there if that's more of your focus. Or you can choose to try to go over to where the uh, religious area is, if you like. 
Let's yeah. Let's put Faith maybe first. Uh, yeah, I'm going to try because uh, she made a good point, and it's possible that they did think in the uh, in a more primitive kind of we run to Faith when uh, uh, in our time of fear. I am going to go check out the religious digs first. Sure. Um, and then my second option, uh, w barring that, so I I'm actually going to start. Uh, uh, the Reich's going to start speaking out loud. He says, "So, the first place I think we should check, in, in alignment with what Kieran says, is uh, we should see if we can find a temple or a similar place of worship. And if we find no luck there, then I believe we should go." Uh, take a look at where the the ruler of this area may have resided and if that still does not get us what we're looking for then we can see about going deeper that makes sense right we're going to hide something something of great importance it's often hid in a temple or it's often hid with the leader's own stash right what are we looking for he doesn't know i do know but I'm okay. not sure. If it, I'm not sure if we're gonna find exactly what I'm looking for. What I'm, do you think we're well, okay? What are we looking for? How about that? Yeah. My people, they, they. Back when the Dakani Empire was at its most powerful, it was ruled by an emperor. The emperor was the single head of state he was the most powerful uh, he was the most influential being in all of the uh all of the county life he held with him a scepter of uh, a scepter of power one that essentially gave him full rule over the Dakani empire the scepter has been lost for millennia, uh, has been lost since the fall of the Takani Empire. I've been taking steps to find it. My research has led me to believe that it might be here, or at least a, a clue to finding it might be here. I don't know, though. Do you know oh. anything more about the scepter and how it gave power, or no? Supposedly, it was magical in some manner. I don't entirely believe that to be true because I imagine a powerful item like that would have been discovered before now if it was if it, it was itself an artifact or magical in some manner. Not it's if an entire city starved to keep and make sure no one would ever find the city in the first place. But you're forgetting the vault was opened. But they never opened the door. The exterior door. I think they opened the vault just to find more places to survive. <laughs> you're remembering that this this might be a fortification but it is a city of living people who maybe some of them did try to leave, but they never did. Either way, temple first, leader second. It could be in either of those places. or well, none of them. Let's go. We might have to go deeper. And so how it grants the power and what it does. I mean, magic is magic and sometimes it just exists. Could be an old legend. That could be truth. Unfortunately, that is the case. So, yeah, that's uh, that's our play. I imagine we were talking about walking anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you guys try to find your way to the religious uh, place, which is uh, obviously <laughs> the uh, area of significance that you um, uh, where you think you're hoping to find a bit more detail about what's going on here, right? So um, when you bring your way down there. Uh, it opens up into an area where, once again, you do see there is a considerable number of people that are grouped up 
and have died here. Now, again, these peoples, just as a reminder, the predominant race that you see down here is this unique form of, of goblin kin that um, that existed there. This like orange fleshed goblin kid that have that like horned nose and it's almost like an '80s mullet style hair that comes down their their back and the like. So um, uh, they're very unique style, and that's predominantly what's here. But you do see other goblins. Uh, bones formation and whatnot, and uh, you do see hobgoblins and the like as well. But that is the predominant one because that's what of uh, the indigenous to the island, right? So, anyways, as you guys uh, uh, make your way into this area, you see the swaths of them dead outside of uh, the temple area. Now, the temple itself is um, a typical temple that you would see in um, the Takati culture. The formation of it, all that stuff, strikes you as as uh, nothing out of the ordinary, right? Uh, it's a beautiful cathedral. Um, the cave that opens up to it actually opens up around it so you can take in like the majesty of the actual structure of the walls itself built into a wall but also like kind of like built out of a wall so when you step into the temple it has a like, cathedral feeling like much like you would imagine a Catholic church would be right uh, Catholic Cathedral so as you go uh, into it uh, towards it though right something does strike you as a bit odd um, the hobgoblins have their faith. They have the God that they worship, just like everybody's, uh, everybody does. But much like all the other peoples that exist in Faerun, most people don't worship a, a, a God of their own race, right? Like, most of them worship, like, say, a God that's represented by a dragon that sometimes takes on the avatar of their race, right? Like Dal Ara, Dal Dor, and so on and so forth. With a few exceptions, like, you know, gnolls. Uh, they worship a knoll, you know, because they're, well, they're gnolls. Um, however, as you approach this temple, what you see standing before you on either side of the large doors going into it is a statue of the same man, the same hobgoblin man standing there before you. And you see, like, this beautiful statue of it. And you think to yourself for a few moments, like, oh, maybe this is some sort of saint. Even though we don't really have that in my faith. Maybe it's like something, you know, because you guys do a bit of like an ancestor, um, you, you pay respects to your ancestors, but, you know, typical God worship that's existed for aeons. Well, um, uh, that's a bit out of the ordinary. Uh, do you make remark of it or say anything before you enter? Uh, the other three probably wouldn't notice in the least, but you probably... What's the statue actually... carrying? Yeah, yeah. I would like to make a religion check, um, just because I... I'm familiar with the dark six, and I think hobgoblins usually worship the mockery. Mm -hmm. So can I make a religion roll with that? Absolutely, you most certainly can. Oh. And um, uh, like I said, they worship the same gods that have existed for, for ages, right? But please, yeah. Aaron, you're welcome to do so. Uh, one of the hobgoblins is carrying a sword. The other one is carrying a scepter. That's your emperor, kind of. So uh, with your religion roll, uh, Karen, you're actually able to... Because <laughs> in height... Two and two together for that. And you also do know the uh, the mockery mm -hmm. specifically. Um, while people worship the mockery, they know that the mockery isn't a member of their um, their race. They often will represent the mockery as a member of their race because they try yeah. to identify it that way. Mm -hmm. But that's just more like, of a... The devourer takes on many like different like races and forms and whatnot. Exactly. But that's more of like you understand that they are not a member of your race. It's more of a way of paying like mm -hmm. a homage to them or show respect to them than it is like a, like a, I am awesome. Yeah. So this um, is... Oh, sorry. The, 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 the oh. I just want to quick... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go I was going to say, quick question. It's how well is the statue made? Okay. So before I answer that, and Aaron, yeah. uh, you also know that... Uh, if there's a depiction of this god in a temple, mm -hmm. multiple depictions, they'll often be depicted in different ways, but mm -hmm. representative of the same god, right? Yeah. So it's not like they're the, uh, one set form. William, mm -hmm. very well formed. It's uh, extremely well. well crafted, and obviously because it's stone and there's not a lot of weathering down here, it's it's maintained its uh, uh, fine craft, and they're both the same person. Would you say that I could locate an object based on the sculpture of this scepter um uh potentially yes uh you could uh you might want some more detail like to go up to it investigate it itself yeah, if absolutely. there are more images of it or, or whatever it might help that's going to be a bit of a stretch though and i would actually with just this one statue here i would require you to make like a, a high dc arcana check to push that one through yeah, that's fine. I would do that because it also says, like, um, if you're not completely familiar, it'll detect the nearest object of a particular kind. So, mm -hmm. 
I will. So just an Arcana check. Uh, yeah, you're welcome to. Um, no, no, no. What are you casting locate object right now? Well, no, I would investigate first and try to. Yeah. Sure. So um, before you guys even go into the temple itself, um, uh, Bellum's like, uh, hold on a second. I want to look look a little bit closer and, and go and check that out. Oh wait! That's awesome. I, it is. You were just more excited than I. You yelled before I saw what it landed on, and it didn't load yet, and I, it was overwhelming. God. I was scared. I was Will right being now. overwhelmed. Well, it wasn't for the viewers, just so you know. It wasn't for the viewers. They all got to see it at the same time that I. I think it might have been intense for the viewers too. Maybe but intense, but they knew. Yeah. <laughs> they knew why. I, I love the fact that it's a green dye on top of the green blood's head right now. By the way, so um, anyways, you uh do a very thorough investigation find out all the nuanced details and so on and so forth i would actually go so far as to say that with this one description that you uh got off of this you'd be feel comfortable to do exactly what we were describing beforehand something similar enough da, 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 but you'd probably still need more to be able to fine-tune mm -hmm. that same that exact item you don't mm -hmm. have to do more searching just to get as far as you just did right now compare that? right cool uh, would you want to cast now, or do you guys want to just go into the temple first? I, I would want to cast the temple. I would cast now, to be honest. Like, even if they, they can start walking in, I can cast it in the last 10 minutes. Yeah. So, I cast it now. Click. I am clicking it, yeah. So, uh, you try to locate object for that object, and you actually do sense the presence of it several times over from immediately in front of you. Ah, oh, damn it. A bunch of statues. <sighs> I walk into the, the... I just kind of have, like, an obvious face on because I'm, I'm realizing what the magic is telling me. Mm -hmm. And I would say, yeah, we should walk in. I imagine there's, like, a, a flare of excitement for maybe, like, half a second that yeah. it drops. Yeah, it's, I look very disappointed because of that flare of excitement. If it just failed, I'd be like, huh? But this is just like a, oh, I know what you're doing. Yeah. Um, because you cast that, of course, you did lose trace of uh, your other spell. Just so you know. Yeah. yeah I, that's fine. Matter. You guys have been down here for greater than an hour anyways. It's yeah, exactly. Several hours. So you make your way into the doorway, and as soon as you walk in, immediately you detect what the presence of one of them has shifted from in front of you to behind you. And you turn around, you see buttressing on the other side, though not quite as tall, because now you're indoors even though you've been in a cave the whole time, uh, uh, are a statue, uh, statues behind you, identical to the person, one holding a sword, one holding a scepter, right behind you. And then l taking in the sights of the actual uh, temple itself that's inside here. And the temple itself actually is lit. Uh, it's lit, son. It's lit, boys. So um, uh, it's actually lit. It's not like it's extremely bright light, but it's not like super dim light either. It's like a soft solid lighting that just seems to be magically held in place here um that allows you to take in the whole temple and does cast shadows in different areas and gives like this very like ominous where like the, the inside of the temple both feels incredibly large but kind of coming in at you at the same time kind of feeling that once again gives that bit of an ominous feel to it uh inside the temple you see lined in every one of the seats corpses of course once again skeletons of people that have long since died of starvation and the like along, uh, along as time passed on. Um, and you do see along the walls different carved in portraits or statues all over the place of the, uh, of the same depiction of the same person throughout it. Wow, this pastor's sermon must have been really boring. <laughs> uh -uh. That's awful. <laughs> That's terrible. Does Reich even react to that? I, uh, no, Reich just like looking at the uh, looking at the temple. Like, uh, I, it's hard to describe. Reich's a very stoic person, so he all whenever he displays any emotion, it's 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 subtle. It's hard to see, but you can just see just the the further we get into this uh, this place, the more. I want to say hopeless. He looks, maybe just sad, from a, from an outside perspective. But just looking around this room, just seeing 
I mean, plus side to them being dead, stop working to ask some questions. That is true. If maybe you want to know what they're protecting here, if we find someone who looks important. Which bones look important? No, we have to find the garb. Will exactly. The good. I mean, if someone was wearing met, these people have very fine metal skills. Fine jewelry would be very good. You guys can roll your investigation checks to look yep. about. It'd be fairly low DC to find this person. Higher DCs, obviously, for more things that you find along the way. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, Star Wars, hey. fucking brilliant. Yeah. I'm looking for corpses. It's my jam. <laughs> it's my jam. This is me, boys. Yeah. Oh. And, and and Kieran has joined him in looking for corpses so often. <laughs> Basically a date. It's weird that the market finding person doesn't find anything. So yeah, terrible. Uh, I imagine it's actually. I don't, I don't have a plus nine to investigation. I, I imagine it's actually Bellum is literally the one that finds the person that's clearly the pastor. The one that gave that uh, the the sermon here, the one that was in charge, he finds that pretty quickly. Uh, it's Reich who looks around and kind of takes in the sight of um, uh, of the place and looking about. That sees that the other peoples that have died in this place aren't just like commoners around, because again, these are skeletons that have clothing and stuff on them as well, right? So they aren't just like the same kind of common folk that you would have seen out there. In here is actually a higher uh, density of hobgoblins than out there by far. It's actually almost completely hobgoblins that are inside the temple. And clearly everybody that's inside the temple as they died, uh, died with like finery. Uh, not finery, sorry, with uh, value to their clothing. Uh, even if not necessarily jewelry. So these are clearly peoples that um, were able to make their way into the temple above others, right? That's kind of like the, uh, what Reich is able to learn along, along the way. What Kieran is able to discover um, is actually the back room that has like all the books and stuff like that to be um uh, of like you know records and the actual faith and and uh, things like that that are still held here uh they're back inside of the pastor's room and so even though it's in goblins so she can't read such a filthy language um she at least was able to discover them along the way what stalbor is actually able to discover is something a, a tad bit more as a matter of fact stalbor as you're like walking about and taking in the sight of it's like they can find the body and you're really taking in the sight walking the walls around seeing the pillars and the statues and taking the sights again the person that seems to be of significance amongst all these and standing over the people as they're like bowing to him and so on and so forth it's all the same exact person over and over and over again but after seeing this person over and over and over again maybe it's the light maybe it's just the angle Maybe it's just because you've been seeing the same face for so long and you're somewhat racist. But the person actually has a few features prominent enough that almost remind you of Reich. Hey, Reich, I found your cousin. <laughs> you're right, you that? No, I found it, not Kira. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's like, you monster. <laughs> I I, actually, monster. considering it's being cured in like this back room, I will sort of like maybe look at one of the statues, maybe like pick one up easily, <laughs> casually. Be like, do you think Reich intends to get the scepter and the sword to become the emperor of Dargun? I mean, that seems like a good goal from Dav. We know he's what top goblin ability. You know, he doesn't like his dad very much. Doesn't seem like he, a stretch. He might have distant links to the bloodline. Perhaps. Guys, I found the pastor. Are you... <laughs> <laughs> I'll put like a hand on like Salvor's shoulder, like don't. Tell him his jokes <laughs> suck. I don't think he's joking, Salvor. No, I mean the pastor's joke. No one listens to me. Shot? No, I don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I mean... Why, why do you say that? I, I'm, I'm just wondering it. I... I mean, look look at this... This this this, this statue. I and like the statue. In color. Mm -hmm. And with, its, with his hair tied back. 
Stop and with they... sort of an emotionless face. They, they all look the same. They don't all look the same. Pretty much. No, but there's there's nuances in all things. No, they have like the tusks. They're all the, but they all have, but there's a type of the same creature. <laughs> this conversation goes on for too long. <laughs> what? I, anyway, I, 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 it. If he wants to do that, that's fine. It's his choice. I mean, I think he might do. I don't know. I have no idea if he would be a good emperor. But I guess whoever has the blood and connects the sword and the scepter is the emperor, right? They could at least command the others to do that, but, but they are the emperor. Anyway, uh, what, what are we doing? We can we can ask this to... Um, do you think this is an important person? Should we try to find their enough. corpse? All right. Uh, Reich, we found someone. I would, he, I would like, b uh, bustle in is probably that the best. That boy thinks you're a great cousin. I, no. I, I, I'm really, Reich, <laughs> I don't know if you have a bloodline connection to the great deceased emperor of Dagon, of the Dakani. My name, my namesake, Mertalon, that is, it is a uh, long bloodline that comes from one of the, one of the generals that served under him, whether or not he had a bloodline relation to the, uh, the, bloodline relation to the emperor i don't know records of that were not very well kept at the uh at the collapse of the dukani empire on arenel we have ways of reading someone's past in honesty it's linked to our dreams uh and occasionally our blood but there may be magic in your homeland that could perhaps tell you if you are related to him I merely say it as a suggestion. Maybe that's why you're compelled to this scepter. My people have no respect for the blood uh, for the bloodlines that came before. They know only power and those who wield it. Okay. Well, let's talk to a ghost. <clears throat> All right. And so uh, I, I said, I sit there, kind of looking at you, expectantly. You probably do the talking. Uh, and I sort of put my staff above this person that Kieran found, and I sort of tap the the bottom of it on their chest, and I cast Speak with Dead. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> so when you cast Speak with Dead, <clears throat> the bones before you rattle ever so slightly, just like a little. As uh, is there's like a mist that rises up off of them, and what. Uh, appears before you is a a wafy misty kind of uh spirit um from the waist down it kind of like filters off into uh something that's becomes uh it doesn't really have lines or outlines you can't really see the beginning of the end of it and it kind of also fades from view more than just be spreading out too far right it's uh too ethereal um, but from the waist up to the shoulders, it get, gradually gets more, more and more fine lines, sharper, deeper in color, uh, more prevalent. To like, you can see the shoulders to the top of the head are very fine, uh, are very defined, and so on and so forth. There's no color to it beyond like a, a whitish kind of blue, but it's extremely defined. And so there before you is uh, the shape of what must have been the person beforehand, clearly a hobgoblin um, female that would have uh, been the leader of this religious group here. You can tell by the garb and whatnot that they're wearing, which is uh, some sort of offshoot, but fairly similar to the kind of religious garb you would see on um, the Kani peoples of this era, of this age, you know from, from research in the past, right? Now, as a reminder, the duration of this is uh, 10 minutes, but the actual number of spell uh, questions you can answer is five based off of um, uh, Ollie's caster level or whatever. Uh, no, it's just five. Oh yeah, I thought it's it was just five. Three. No, it's no, just it, does, it does not increase. Why did I think it was three before? Might be older edition. Yeah. Uh, in, in, in old D and D, it was one per caster level. But why? Did I think yeah. It was... exactly. Oh, now I'm just... confusing it with uh, with commune. Yep. So, anyways, uh, the fifth edition version. So, um, anyways, it stands there before you. Technically speaking. Um, Ollie's the only one. Or actually, can you give others the ability to ask questions too, Ollie? I've always run it that way. Uh, 
I don't really see why... It doesn't it necessarily be... say it has to be the caster ask him questions. It does say you ask the corpse up to five questions, but... That's... I've always asked... I've always done it in anyone in the area can ask the question. Yeah. But that's up to you, Scott. Nope, nope, that's fine. And uh, uh, technically speaking, it's not you casting the spell either. It's your, you know... It's the but, staff, exactly. So, so yep, yeah, that's fine. It's kind of one of those things where I imagine when you do that, you more or less, like, stall or hold... Like, uh, like Reich hold my hand. And, like, Reich becomes, like linked to the spell so as you summon mm. it up others can witness and hear but not necessarily speak oh, to the, uh, the corpse yeah. um uh Bellum, i imagine you trigger your ability yeah okay and so you trigger i won't understand this and kieran do you understand no, goblin or no i do not understand goblin no okay so kieran will have to be the one that's kind of like none the wiser i don't understand to... goblin unless this translates for me uh for you it makes perfect sense because it's your magic. That otherwise, how would you communicate with the spirit, right? Though it would be kind of a douchey way to do that. <laughs> so hey, for a minute, you could do it either way. I, I have never made that a thing in any of my campaigns in the past, but I might do that in the future because you know five E's too sense. too wi too wimpy. Anyways, I could be mean to you. Uh, but anyways, for now, no, you're fine. You cast a spell. You can communicate in a right can too. Bell can understand. So usually this is a separate language in Eberron, but I'm assuming we don't do that just because it, 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 it make it too complicated in this game. But I speak in high goblin to the... No, uh, yeah, separate game. language, absolutely. It's uh, I, I don't give a shit about the 5e. There's only a couple... La I like 50 languages. It feels more real. So the could idea you... of like... <laughs> Next time, could you provide a list of them while we're making our characters, please? Yeah, uh, just Google uh, 3.5 Eberron and assume all that. Oh. You Remind me next time we're making everyone yeah. characters. Because I didn't know that. I'll yeah, just mail um, you the book. Mail it back when you're done. Hi, Goblin. <laughs> Anyone who speaks Goblin can probably understand the majority oh, of what I'm saying. Of course. It's pretty much just like the difference between, like, uh, you know, Sp uh, Spanish in Spain and Spanish in Mexico. No, 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 no. It's the difference between a posh British accent and somebody from Texas. All right, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, Texans. Somebody from uh, Louisiana. You already know. You're not offended. It's the same language, but very, very, very different dialect. Yeah. Exactly. It's, this sort of thing happens in all sorts of fancy of low version versus high version. Exactly. It's it's so uh, I say um I say to her Is this uh, is the Emperor Sept a scepter in this city? <clears throat> so these spirits, when you ask them questions, it's just as a reminder. It's knowledge based off of, uh, of what they knew. had when they were alive. Of course, yeah. That's mm -hmm. why. That's why I'm starting off with that question to see if they, if they even knew about the scepter's existence of in the city. Absolutely, of course. Um, uh, the scepter was in the city before the betrayal. Who committed? The, uh, who was responsible for the betrayal? Um, next of kin, the brother, the one that others thought would be the closest and the most true to our Lord. Was the scepter uh, in this? temple from time to time our lord would grace us with his presence and would bear the scepter in his holiness to the temple was your lord in his estate when the betrayal occurred He was in his home where he ruled. Were your people hiding themselves from the the creatures of God, what's the name of the plane? Uh, the creatures of the plane of Zoriath. 
the que- yeah, were you were your people hiding from the creatures of the plain of Zoriat? I do not know what Zoriat is or was. So I do not believe that that is the case. The people were hiding from death. And the spirit would, uh, you know, slowly kind of like discoporeate, like almost like it's falling downwards and it's out of uh, this reality at the same time. Now, uh, to a typical elf, they'd just sit around and smoke a bowl for 10 days and just cast it again because that's just like blinking. But, but you know, to. Uh, yeah. you no, guys. we got busy things to do. No, I got what I wanted. So he was, when, uh, I say out loud. So when uh, the uh, when their leader died, the one who had the scepter, he died in his estate, and he was betrayed by his brother, who was more true. The last emperor of the Dakani Empire was known as the Shaken Emperor. He was the most fearful of every uh, of anything, assassination attempts. This was not necessarily the emperor they were speaking of, though. This city would have been ruled by a baron or baroness or, or something to that effect. Maybe they had the scepter and it it had been split from the emperor some time ago. It's possible in the in the decaying times of the Dakani Empire, as I said, there was there was a lot lost to time. Most people didn't bother keeping record because they thought it was the end times but you survive how you can if this scepter did have magic and powers or at least they believed it so well you could protect a city underground or something of the sort we'll find answers in his estate i believe i agree with you and the question becomes was the brother referring to the brother of the emperor or the brother of the ruler here and if we don't find answers in the estate we might find answers in his grave I agree. Then, uh, uh, then we'll make our way to the estate. Uh, before you make your way to the estate, I imagine Kieran would bring to your attention. Uh, well, or even Stalbar, because Kieran would have already told Stalbar to build the books, right? You would remember that there are the, the, the church's books, which we all know in real life that uh, holy texts, while full of a whole bunch of garbage and fluffy nonsense about logic behind them, about things that don't exist, stories and legends. Stories and legends that have bits of history involved, like, like was there at some point in time a person by the name of Jesus? Yeah, that that may have happened, but like, could that he? That also tells you a lot about. Okay, okay, things, you know, too much. <laughs> so Stable would take those an atheist, you know. rub the 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 dust from it, and sort of hand it to Reich. We I mean, like, we might need to camp here. It's just you read this if we uh, if we do. I agree. So then we can uh, we can spend the the night in this place resting. We'll bar up the uh, the doors to the best of our ability, and um, I'm going to spend the night reading these books. So you choose right. to spend, you choose to spend the night um, down here. And honestly, you have been for a long while. I was gonna say, um, I, I, yeah, I, I'm thankful yeah. for that. And the place More is use. magically lit well enough that Bella would be incredibly comfortable mm-hmm. uh, in this place as well. So. Just so you know, the more I use this staff, the less likely I am to save your life. So I am thankful for the rest. Yeah, let's let let us rest. I'm um, I'm appreciative of you using your magic to assist me. I, I know that none of you need to be here, and I know I haven't been the most forthcoming, but this is incredibly important to me, and I'm thankful that I choose it here. And so you, uh, you guys are going to spend the night here. It's going to be a long rest, which is wonderful, because between this session and next, all is going to toss me all the spells that he's hoping to get his hands on. And no, you're going to tell me what spells I get. Somewhere between those two <laughs> statements are going to be uh, what happens, <laughs> and uh, and he's going to be able to memorize some of them tomorrow because you know it'll be at the end of a long rest where he gets attacked in the middle. That it's not going to happen. Um, so uh, before Blech. we sign off. For this session, honestly, it was nice to kind of delve into a lot of the lore and kind of like pull ourselves back in, uh, even if William was falling asleep. Uh, just kidding, Will. Just kidding. 
I was nearly falling asleep for a bit there. But to be fair, though, Ollie, for you, it is 6.46 in the morning. I was saying earlier that because we haven't done this for a while and I've changed my schedule around, I'm not used to this anymore. Yeah. To be fair I'm, for, you know, Will, it, it, it's almost 2 a.m. here and I th imagine he worked today. I, I was I was kidding about Will. Will's always fine. Yeah. I did it, though. I was awake. Be proud of me, fam. Good, because you were the main character for this. Yeah, and Aaron woke you up several times. Twice. Yeah, I was going to say, like, twice. <laughs> All right, Please so... Start. Uh, game. Doing the, the round robin, uh, let's start with Stolly Boy. I'm Ollie. Uh, you can find me on Twitch and Twitter at Ollie Rant. Uh, I haven't been doing so much art recently because I've got lots of other things going on. One of the things I have going on is on Wednesdays, uh, Stars Without Number Ardent, starring Delric and Will. It is a uh, down to earth Stars Without Number game which deals with uh, a, a human civilization far removed from Earth. And uh, uh, Scott is essentially their captain. Um, so it is a, a real good time. Um, and there is more Ollie RPG stuff going on, not just being on this and Lost Initiative on Thursdays. Um, more stuff. Uh, I'm also playing Subnautica or The Sims pretty much every day in the week, aside from probably tomorrow and Monday. I'm streaming a lot at the moment because I'm insane. So, um, speaking of insanity, uh, what was I just about to say about that? Oh, actually, on that session that he was just talking about two seconds ago, the uh, the Stars That Never game that he's running in his own little version of, uh, of it, which is lots of fun. R rules are core. It's just the world is different. Anyways, um, the uh, we actually had a really cool reveal about one of the PCs over there, too, which is nifty and... And a whole bunch of shit that's happening. It's so. going to be a good game. We, we've only uh, had two sessions so far, so it's a quick, easy catch-up if you haven't seen it so far. So totally uh, catch in. Uh, mm -hmm. Wilhelm is also a part of that game. Uh, but tell us what's going on in your life, sir. Um, not much. Brewing a lot of beer. I've been get ready for September. Yeah, I've been brewing tons of beer. Um, right now I have six batches fermenting and four more to come within the next week so i'm doing that, that a lot 10. yeah which ends up being about 480 beers anyway counting with beers yeah exactly eventually it gets pretty hard it it after like your eighth beer actually is when it gets really hard to start oh, man, no after my eighth beer i'm dead oh that's fair we're two different <laughs> people though um yeah but anyway so you can check me out at will call brewing on instagram or anywhere really i'm active in the discord and i have a feeling two and three quarters of all these equals one will that's about right probably and, um and probably three i'm much three better at drinking all liquor than beer. One, eric you know like all he's a little boy he's a british chap compared to us americans although it's Meredith funny because everything big they say that things are the exact opposite. Like when I went to England, they're like, oh, you're American. You can't drink. And I'm like, oh, let me tell you, I've been practicing for this. <laughs> but everybody refers like, to America as like the drunk. Like we're like, we have the highest no, alcoholism no, we've, rate We've done this planet. before. Binge no. drinking is a horrible thing in the UK that ruins lives. No, but UK, it is everywhere. But you know, but the UK, when you, when you go there and you say you're American, they go, oh, you can't drink. That's literally what they but i've been interpreted as by many people when i was there a lot of people have that opinion my response yeah. would be not anymore <laughs> no i was just they were all 18 years old and i was like 22 and i'm like let's see how much you can drink and i oh, i can drink less livers. i, I can I drink destroyed. less now than i could then i'll be honest 18 don't yes. have developed liver they're not even full people yet Every... it was funny <laughs> they're not even done with puberty yet at 18 that's cute actually Challenge someone to a drinking contest Please. and I destroyed him. I was like, go away. Yeah. We must keep going. I need to go to the bathroom. So oh, I'm okay, sorry. Then we'll do Aaron next. Aaron, who are you? How can we find you? You're <laughs> awful. Yeah. I, I'm doing well. Thank you. I'm going to be starting a new job soonish. So I'm doing a lot of studying and research for that and brushing up on old skills. So it's keeping me really, really busy. So if I'm not as active on the Discord and whatnot. That's why. It's been and a better place because I'm of my life right now. Mm -hmm. Fuck you, Will. <laughs> Um, excuse me, she still pops in enough to give me sass and run away. It's yeah. true, I tried. <laughs> Even her not being on the I, Discord much I is more than that. most people. <laughs> yeah, that's fair, that's true, that's true. 
Um, uh, and Derek. Uh, hi. Yeah, the Kunsai64. Uh, you guys should check me out on, um, on Instagram. I am now on Instagram. I'm on the Twitch usually. Um, Wait, you're on Instagram? Yes, I just... Instagram instantly. Uh, not much. I just recently started Instagramming. I'm trying to kind of, you know, put my, my adventures in, um... Uh, my adventures here in New Jersey slash New York. There will be bugs uh, tomorrow. Adventure. So uh, if you guys if you guys uh, follow me on Instagram, if me and Aaron do anything interesting, we will be taking uh, pictures of that, putting it on Instagram uh, for for funsies. So you can follow me, see what interesting shit What's we're doing. What's your name on Instagram? I just it's followed you. Size sixty four. <laughs> oh, same. Okay, look at that. Good branding. So, pretty, unlike pretty, unlike pretty, some other people, Ollie Smith Art. Pretty pretty I easy to follow keep- me. My horrible Twitch, where I talk about oh. butts and food, separate from my professional <laughs> illustration career, slightly. I might, I, uh, I might have some other stuff coming down the pipeline. No promises yet, just because I'm looking, uh, looking at doing some more stuff just for fun. It won't be anything like on a regular schedule if I did anything, and it might not necessarily be like streaming. But I have some stuff uh, I'm talking with buddies about to try to do something new and fun. So I'll keep you guys posted if anything comes of that. Keep us posted. And I'm Derek. You can Google me by Googling this word right here. Or go to Derek.com because, you know, that's also a place. Is that website up to date? It is. It is up to date. It is. It's it's totally up to date. I got yelled at by Plex, I think, the most recently, who was kind enough to message me several times, slid to my DMs, and was like, yo, you might want to. And I was like, okay. And so I'm actually gonna check, you know, I'm gonna check it right now while we're live. I'm gonna make sure I'm not lying to you while we're live, because I believe we're good and it's a perfect opportunity to torture Eric just a smidge more. So I'm uh, just gonna go. Fuck no, you. No, 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 no. I need to pee. I, I also yeah, see, need I see us live. You're an adult, you can just leave. You can just walk away. I see us no. live from the computer. Mondays, Tuesdays, kids on bike, Wednesdays, Witcher. Uh Wednesdays also Ardent. Wednesdays also Edge of the Empire. Wednesday, sorry, Thursday's Dark Sun, Friday's Eberron, Saturday's currently video games that'll change in the near future, and Sunday's nothing. Um, okay, yeah, that's that's everything's there. Mm-hmm. Up to date, Ollie. And again, we're live. I see it. Hi, hi myself. Okay, so anyways, I will uh, catch y'all later. Bye. Wait, where did it go? He left. I wasn't paying attention. I was talking. That was more important. <laughs>